What is going on guys, it's Starfield Dad back with another Bethesda related video and of course we're talking about Starfield. It's two weeks away and it's all this channel is consumed about currently and I cannot wait to get into it. Of course I didn't get an early access code but that's alright, I'm just small time. Anyhow, I wanted to go over the developer Q&A and what I wanted to focus on was not all 16 of the questions that they answered but the ones I thought that stood out that we really got some great info that can turn the tides of what we think we can do in the game on day one. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now I'm a veteran of BGS games, so this didn't come as a surprise to me, but it's a great question and even the way they worded it for new players coming into this role playing scene, maybe for the first time. And it goes as this, for those of us who have never played a BGS game and will be starting Starfield, what information should we know that will make the experience more impactful right from the start? How deep should we go into creating our character's backstory before we start the game? Now, Emil, who, if you got to check out this uh, Q&A, was, I thought, hilarious. He really would throw some hints out there, some little winks of what to expect and maybe to really, you know, wet your tongue on what you thought was going to happen. But his response to this was, hmm, well, we always make our games for fans both old and new, so you can jump in without ever having played a Bethesda title before. But we do look at it less as playing a game and more about living in the universe we created now i can go on with his response about his character but i thought i should stop right there he says it's more about playing less about playing the game and more about living in the universe we created now that's unique to me because that's how i've ran with every vgs game i've played especially skyrim that's my all-time favorite and when you go into that and you look from the start, from the opening intro, and when you get to take full control of your character, you walk out into this world and you are immediately transported. Now that sounds kind of cliche, kind of something like you would hear from like a Hallmark card almost, but you walk into it and you are transported there to where this is your character. You can do what you want, be as evil as you want, be as good as you want, help who you want, collect what you want. That to me has always been the uniqueness of every BGS game and a lot of role playing games in general. So I thought this question was great that if you've never played a BGS game and maybe you're watching this video and were curious about what Starfield was going to be about or what you can do, this question emulates exactly what the purpose of a BGS game is and what the developers have in mind as they answer this question and as they made the game for us, each individual. And that's what one of the many reasons I believe this game is just going to be phenomenal. Now, coincidentally, right after that, the next question was really great, and it was about how will the smuggling cargo system work? Can we hide it somewhere on the ship and sell it for more currency later? And Will and Emil's answer were both great. They said, Will said, certain items are considered contraband, and you'll need to smuggle them past security ships that are in orbit of major, major settlements. Emil also said there are specific items that are considered contraband, meaning they're pretty much illegal everywhere. And yes, you can hide them using special ship modules that you can purchase. So, you know, don't get caught with those harvested organs. And he had an emoji of the fallout boy with sunglasses on after that. Uh, the economy is fixed, but prices of bought and sold goods can change based on the skills. Now, that's kind of been a similar theme in all Bethesda games, especially the Elder Scrolls ones, where if you have a higher speech skill or this skill, you can usually barter better but the fact that you can go through that and how he says using ship modules that to me is awesome because if you've ever played no man's sky if you have contraband on that ship you can have the hardest thing you duck for you know an alien egg tons of them that are worth a ton of money you can't wait to get back and sell them but if they're illegal almost instantly you get out to orbit and they're doing a scan on your ship and if you've got them on there nothing can do you just got sentinels coming at you you got to fight them and hope you win but with this, the fact that you can build your character even more detail around, say, a space pirate, where you have module after module that maybe stacks in the game, where you can hide the best of the contraband, I think is going to be very, very, very interesting and fun. Now, this one got a lot of debate because, to me, I didn't think there was that many people that wanted to play in a pacifist or non-lethal mode. But this question really said that there are a lot. And it states that depending on traits selected like during character creation, Will it at all be possible to play through the game in a pacifist mode, i.e. without killing anyone or potentially anything? Now Will says, I can't guarantee every mission can be completed in pacifist mode, but we do have a couple of systems that will help. One system is the speech challenge game where you can persuade someone to do something like not fight you. 
Emil also reiterates this saying that we talked about very early on to do a pacifist mode, but we really believe that a non-lethal playthrough was not totally feasible. Now, talking about that even further, I believe that pacifist mode is cool. I played Metro, um, the games, uh, all three of them, where I would try to go through every stage of the game and not kill anyone. You know, a silent takedown that didn't kill him but knocked him out. And to me, the stealth like that was always fun. But in a game like this, I agree with him, it's almost impossible to make that as part of this game as broad as it is. Now, if you have a limited sandbox, like let's say, um, a metro game the jedi alone survivor game where you're on a stage and you have limited places you can go i could see that being made but there's too much of your own freedom to do that in nonetheless a great question and i think it would be possible to kill minimal things throughout the game depending on how you play but even the main storyline i think will have caveats where you're just going to have to <clears throat> kill animals or people now this question was my absolute favorite from the entire q a because it just resonates how much little detail they're putting into every aspect of this game so this one's about religion and it says what are the excuse me it says what are the beliefs and basic history of the religions we can join sanctum universum enlightened great serpents now specifically on this i'm going to talk about the sanctum universum in just a second but we'll get to emil's answer because it's a great one he says existing in real life religions are part of the starfield universe which folks of all religions and denominations out there but we don't really focus on them. Instead, we highlight three new ones specific to the game. Sanctum Universum, the members called Universals, believe that God very much exists somewhere in the universe. The higher power is guiding us all. Specifically, they believe that humanity's ability to travel the universe and grab jump is God's way of saying, I'm out there, come find me. Will also resonates with Sanctum Universum saying it's only a couple of decades old in our timeline, but has gained a lot of prominence. They believe that God is out there somewhere in the universe. Humanity's ability to travel stars brings them closer to God. Now, I'm not going to touch on the House Rune, which is the Great Serpent or the Enlightened, because the Sanctum Universum is the one that sticks out the most to me here. And I talked on our podcast to my uh, buddy Eldon, who does it with me, and I'll have that link below. But we talked about how Sanctum Universum is almost could be a real life extension of modern day Christianity. I mean, when you think about it, we're on earth, we're limited to this, but in the next 50, 100, 200 years, if we do develop some kind of space travel and find other homes on other planets, this could be a realization that just like they said, God is out there. We believe he's out there, but we just have to go find him. And to me, that's interesting. I'm really curious how this religion is going to play out in the game. And I'm very, very curious of the dialogue options and possibly what you can do in said religion. And the very last question I wanted to cover today was the last question of the Q&A. And I thought it was very important to the game as what we've seen or haven't seen yet. And that was, what is the history of the mechs? And Emil even said, ooh, the mechs, good one. So we showed this a bit in one of our animated shorts. The mechs are leftovers from the Colony Wars. Note, it's the Colony War, not Colony Wars, singular. Both sides, the United Colonies and the Free Star Collective had mechs, but the Free Star Collective really mastered them. The United Colonies had mechs too, but they also relied on the controlled alien beast from their Xeno Warfare Division. Both of those were outlawed and the armistice that ended the Colony War. I'm not saying that there's old mech battlegrounds in the game, wink wink, mechs not usable no they're in ruins so we did see that in the anime short and i think a lot of us thought that okay they're shown this now because it kind of gives a feedback to why there are no mechs or ground vehicles you know there's a previous war and now it's desolate i still don't understand how that plays into factor in the story lore of why there's no ground vehicles but i am sure they'll probably answer that just to cohesively put everything together once we get in the game but guys, I'll have the link below for all the questions in case you missed it. I'm sure you've seen them by now, but in case you haven't, the link's down there. And let me know what your favorite question or questions were in the comments below. And let me know some feedback on what I've answered today. If you agree, disagree, what's your thoughts? But until next time, in the next video, this is Starfield Dad at Astra, everybody.